Hello. Welcome to Today in History, an AI podcast. I'm Steven. And I'm Ruth. We're the artificial intelligence hosts of this show. Every day, we'll tell you about the most interesting, consequential and sometimes forgotten facts in history that happened on this date. Politics, economy, war, religion, culture. One topic every day. Plus something that you would have heard on the news back then on this date. Also, about a holiday somewhere in the world, someone who was born and someone who died. Hope you stay with us. Please enjoy a few minutes to maybe get a little smarter and appreciate the enormity of every single day. Today is Friday, March 22, 2024. The year is 1913. Our main topic, Phan Sik Long, pictured, the self-proclaimed emperor of Vietnam, was arrested for organizing a revolt against the colonial rule of French Indochina, which was nevertheless carried out by his supporters the following day. On March 1913, Phan Sik Long, a self-proclaimed emperor of Vietnam, was arrested by the French colonial administration for organizing a revolt against their rule. Despite his arrest, his supporters continued with the planned uprising the following day, launching attacks on several locations in Saigon. Although the rebellion ultimately failed, it marked a significant moment in Vietnam's struggle for independence against foreign rule. Context, at the time, Vietnam was part of French Indochina, a grouping of French colonial territories in mainland Southeast Asia. The French had established their rule over Vietnam in the late 19th century, and it had been a source of tension between the two nations ever since. Many Vietnamese people resented the French colonial administration and sought independence. Phan Sik Long, a mystic and geomancer, emerged as a leader among those seeking to overthrow French rule. He claimed to be a descendant of Emperor Han Ni and started his own religious organization as a cover for his political ambitions. He staged a ceremony to crown himself as the Emperor of Vietnam and launched an armed uprising against the French colonial rule. Historical significance, Phan Sik Long's revolt, although unsuccessful, marked a significant moment in Vietnam's struggle for independence. It was one of the early attempts by Vietnamese nationalists to challenge French rule, and it highlighted the growing resentment among the Vietnamese people towards foreign domination. The failure of the revolt led to increased repression by the French colonial administration, but it also inspired further resistance and nationalist movements in the years that followed. In conclusion, the arrest of Phan Sik Long and the subsequent uprising by his supporters were significant events in Vietnam's history. They demonstrated the growing desire for independence among the Vietnamese people and marked the beginning of a long and complex struggle for self-determination that would continue for decades to come. The year is 1794. On the news, the Slave Trade Act of 1794 bans the export of slaves from the United States and prohibits American citizens from outfitting a ship for the purpose of importing slaves. Good evening, and welcome to tonight's historical highlight. We're taking a look back at the Slave Trade Act of 1794, a landmark piece of legislation that marked a significant turning point in the fight against human trafficking and the transatlantic slave trade. Context, for centuries, the transatlantic slave trade had been a brutal reality, with millions of enslaved Africans being forcibly transported to the Americas to work on plantations and in other industries. The trade was lucrative, but it was also morally reprehensible. By the late 18th century, public opinion was beginning to shift, and many people were calling for an end to the trade. Event, in 1794, the United States Congress passed the Slave Trade Act, which banned the export of slaves from the United States and prohibited American citizens from outfitting a ship for the purpose of importing slaves. This was a significant step forward in the fight against the slave trade, as it made it much more difficult for slave traders to operate in the United States. Historical significance, the Slave Trade Act of 1794 was a crucial step in the long journey towards the abolition of slavery. It marked the beginning of a concerted effort by the United States government to combat the transatlantic slave trade, and it paved the way for future legislation that would eventually lead to the abolition of slavery itself. The act also had significant international implications. It put pressure on other countries to follow suit and ban the slave trade, and it helped to shift public opinion against the trade. The act was a powerful statement that the United States was committed to ending the slave trade and working towards a more just and equitable society. 
In conclusion, the Slave Trade Act of 1794 was a momentous occasion in American history, and it marked a significant turning point in the fight against human trafficking and the transatlantic slave trade. It's a powerful reminder of the progress that has been made, and the ongoing struggle for justice and equality that continues to this day. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we'll see you again soon. Our selected holiday for today, Christian Feast Day, blessed Clemens August Graf von Galen. Blessed Clemens August Graf von Galen is a Christian feast day celebrated on March 13, commemorating the life and legacy of a remarkable individual who left a lasting impact on the Catholic Church and the world. Clemens August Graf von Galen was a German count, bishop, and cardinal who fearlessly spoke out against injustices during World War II, including Nazi euthanasia and the persecution of the Church. His unwavering dedication to his faith and his unshakable commitment to standing up for what was right, even in the face of danger, make him an inspiration to people of all backgrounds and beliefs. The cultural significance of this holiday lies in its celebration of courage, conviction, and the unbreakable human spirit. Blessed Clemens August Graf von Galen's story serves as a powerful reminder that even in the darkest of times, individuals can make a difference and that standing up for one's beliefs is essential to creating a better world. His beatification by Pope Benedict XVI in 2005 further solidified his place in history as a shining example of faith, hope, and perseverance. On this day, Christians gather to honor the memory of Blessed Clemens August Graf von Galen through prayers, masses, and reflections on his life and teachings. His legacy extends beyond religious boundaries, serving as a source of inspiration for anyone who strives for justice, compassion, and human rights. It is a day to reflect on the importance of standing up for what is right, even when it is difficult or dangerous, and to draw strength from the examples set by courageous individuals like Blessed Clemens August Graf von Galen. In a world where division, injustice, and oppression still exist, the celebration of this holiday is a poignant reminder that the struggle for a better future is ongoing. Blessed Clemens August Graf von Galen's unwavering commitment to his faith and his unshakable conviction in the face of adversity serve as a beacon of hope, encouraging people to continue striving for a world where all can live in peace, dignity, and respect. On this day, in 1923, Marcel Marceau, French mime and actor, d. 2007, was born. Marcel Marceau, the renowned French mime and actor, left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. Best known for his iconic stage persona, Bip the Clown, Marceau's career spanned over six decades, captivating audiences worldwide with his unique blend of silence and storytelling. Born in Strasbourg, France in 1923, Marceau's early life was marked by hardship and tragedy. His father, a kosher butcher, was deported to Auschwitz during World War II, where he died. Marceau and his mother were forced to flee their home, eventually finding refuge in Switzerland. These experiences profoundly impacted Marceau, shaping his perspective on life and informing his art. Marceau's introduction to mime began during his teenage years, when he attended a performance by the French mime, Jean-Louis Barreau. Entranced by the art form, Marceau studied with Barreau and later trained at the École des Mimes at Comédia in Paris. In 1947, he co-founded the Compagnie de Mime Marcel Marceau, which became a leading force in the development of modern mime. Marceau's rise to fame was meteoric. With his signature white face paint, black eyebrows, and expressive gestures, Bip the Clown quickly became an international sensation. He performed in countless stage productions, television shows, and films, including the Academy Award-winning The Longest Day, 1962. Marceau's unique ability to convey emotion and tell stories without words earned him the nickname The Silent Actor. Marceau's impact on popular culture was significant. He inspired countless artists, including comedians, actors, and musicians. His influence can be seen in the work of artists such as Michael Jackson, who credited Marceau as an inspiration for his signature moonwalk dance. Marceau's legacy extends beyond the world of entertainment, his commitment to peace and human rights led him to perform at benefit concerts and advocate for various social causes. Marceau's personal life was marked by love and loss. He married three times and had two children. His eldest son, Baptiste, followed in his father's footsteps, becoming a mime artist in his own right. Marceau's later years were marred by declining health and personal struggles, but he continued to perform until his death in 2007. 
In recognition of his contributions to the arts, Marceau was awarded numerous accolades, including the French Legion of Honor, the National Order of Merit, and an Emmy Award. He was also inducted into the French Academy of Fine Arts, becoming the first mime artist to receive this prestigious honor. Marcel Marceau's legacy continues to captivate audiences today. His artistry has transcended time, language, and cultural barriers, proving that the power of silence can be just as impactful as the spoken word. As we remember this legendary artist, we celebrate the enduring beauty of mime and the indelible mark left by the incomparable Marcel Marceau. We remember the life of Johannes Magnus, Swedish Archbishop and theologian, b. 1488, who died on this date in 1544. Johannes Magnus, a renowned Swedish Archbishop and theologian, left an indelible mark on the religious and historical landscape of Sweden. Born in 1488, Magnus dedicated his life to serving the Catholic Church and contributed significantly to the fields of theology, genealogy, and history. As the last functioning Catholic Archbishop in Sweden, Magnus played a vital role in maintaining the religious traditions and practices of the Church during a time of great upheaval. His unwavering commitment to his faith and leadership was particularly remarkable during the Protestant Reformation, which saw the rise of Lutheranism and the decline of Catholicism in Sweden. Magnus's contributions extended beyond the realm of religion. He was also a skilled genealogist and historian, dedicating himself to the study and documentation of Swedish history and nobility. His work in this field helped to preserve the cultural heritage of Sweden and provided a valuable resource for future generations. Despite the challenges he faced during his lifetime, Magnus remained steadfast in his beliefs and remained true to his calling. His dedication to his faith, his community, and his scholarly pursuits serve as an inspiration to us all. Today, his legacy lives on, and his contributions continue to be celebrated and studied by scholars and historians alike. In conclusion, Johannes Magnus's life and achievements serve as a testament to his unwavering commitment to his faith, his community, and his scholarly pursuits. His contributions to the fields of theology, genealogy, and history have left a lasting impact on Sweden and continue to be remembered and celebrated today. This was Today in History, an AI podcast. Brought to you by Decor Studios. All content was sourced from Wikipedia and processed with open source large language models. This podcast is released under Creative Commons, Attribution, Share Alike, 4.0, International License. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you tomorrow.